Good evening, and uh, welcome to the 47th Annual Toronto International Film Festival. My name is Ravi Srinivasan. I'm a Senior Manager and International Programmer here at TIFF. It is my great pleasure to introduce the North American premiere screening of Saim Sadiq's Joyland. <laughs> A sincere thank you to our major sponsors, Bell, RBC, Bulgari, and Visa for their support. Our major supporters, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, the City of Toronto for their support. This film is eligible for the Sean Mendez Foundation Changemaker Award for the best film by an emerging filmmaker that tackles issues of social change. And of course, it's also eligible for the People's Choice Award. So after the film, please go to tiff.net slash vote and vote for Joyland. We would like to thank Film Constellation and WME for providing us with this film. <laughs> Saim is a filmmaker from Lahore, Pakistan. His 2019 short, Darling, played here at TIFF, and Joyland is adapted based on that short. His staggering debut feature, Joyland, has catapulted Pakistan to the forefront of international cinema. Winner of the Insultan Regard Jury Prize and the Queer Palm in Cannes, this film is about queerness, gender, sexuality at the forefront. But at its core, it's really about family, desire, and who has the right to their own desire. It's powerful, relevant, deeply important. And if you ask me, it's one of the best films of the year, period. And it's my great pleasure to introduce the director of Joyland, Sam City. Thank you so much. Um, this is such a beautiful image, I can say my view is better than yours, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful theater, and you seem like a lovely audience, and I can't wait to share the film with you. I would first like to introduce you guys to my cast and crew, so in my producer and the first person to come on board for the film, Apura Guru Charan. Our co-writer, who has been a lifesaver for me, Maggie Briggs. And possibly the youngest, most talented music composer in Pakistan, Abdullah, who is also our composer, Abdullah Siddiqui. And on to the cast who um, are a bunch of people who are so talented and amazing that I don't think I can, um, I don't have the words for them. I think it's best that you experience their magic yourself. So in no particular order, Sanya Said, Sohail Samir, Sohail Samir, Alina Khan, Rasti Farooq, and Ali Junejo. I wrote something little to introduce the film that I'm just gonna read off my phone. Um, I wanna thank all of you for showing up to watch this movie. Um, I don't have any children and I also don't think I'll ever have any, but making Joyland is the closest I have come to being a parent. Uh, on the face of it, it's a story about the clash between patriarchy and identity, but deep down it is really just a film about people. It's an ensemble film that revolves around a bunch of characters who are all played so beautifully and so compassionately by our wonderful cast right here. The characters that form this story have been with me for seven years. Sometimes they've been like my children who I needed to nurture and watch over, scold them for making some questionable decisions. Sometimes they've been my guardians and teachers who've challenged my judgments and biases, and always they've been my friends. 
This film is their collective story, and today, as we pass along these characters to you, we hope that you also befriend them and that their humanity will find a place in your hearts. Thank you. Please welcome back the writer-director of Joyland, Saim Sadiq. Time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Um, I'll uh, get started with a couple of questions, and then we'll throw it to this very raucous audience. Oh, hello. Um, Sime, can you, you know, we, I mentioned that this was developed, uh, adapted from your 2019 short, Darling, but much as developed. There are so many more layers uh, to the feature here. I'm wondering if you can just talk about the adaptation process and just the extension of your short. The adaptation process was actually both ways because in a way the feature film existed, the story existed in my head before I made the short film uh, and I didn't want to make the short film about that story or those characters because uh, I wanted to keep them for Joyland but I wanted to explore the world of the theater because it was so new to me. The family life is something that, you know, is not new to me, of course. We've all kind of grown up in Pakistan, at least, I mean, most of the cast and crew. Um, and we know what it feels like, so that's easy to imagine, but you know, creating characters which belong to a world that you don't come from, like the theater, was something that I had to do a bit of research for, so Darling was honestly like a research project for me, like that's how it started. Um, but it did, once I'd shot Darling and we had done, I would made the film, it did inform a lot about the feature, you know, particularly because I became friends with Alina, um, and, you know, so I knew that she was going to be playing a very different character, but playing the character of Biba in the film. And, uh, again, a character that I, you know, have far lesser knowledge of than perhaps, say, writing a character like Heather, for example. Um, so it was like a give and take between the short and the feature that, you know, worked out, I hope. And uh, the, the cast is remarkable. The performances all the way down the line. Woo! It's, it's, it's quite special to see everybody involved contribute so much depth to the story. And I'm wondering if you can talk about the casting process and it'd be great to hear from some of you about why you chose this film and to work with Sam on this project. They were all cast in such different ways. So Alina came with the like from the short. So when I was writing the feature, I she knew that there was going to be a film and that she was going to be a part of it. Um, 
And then I think the second person to get cast was after like six months of putting out so many auditions and asking my friends to audition for this part because I could not find a guy to, who would either be good enough or agree to do this part. You know, there were people who would read it and they were in like the second phase of auditioning and they would read it and they'd be like, no. And these people were like not big actors. They had no career. But they were saying no to this film. Because like, we will wait for the next one. This one we don't want to do. <laughs> so, and the last audition that we had joke with Ali all the time, it is a joke, that the last audition we had scheduled after six months was Ali Janejo, uh, who was brave enough to play a part. Uh, yeah, which is not easy to play, you know? It's not, it's not easy, it's not uh, the most likable guy, it's not the most charming guy, it's not, you know, he's not, he's, he's frustrating, um, you know? So that's how Ali was cast, because Ali does not mind being those things at all. <laughs> and uh, Rasti, I had, uh, I know from school, uh, from my college. Uh, we went to college together and I made my first little short film with her. And so I knew of her, so I reached out to her, I sent her the script. Actually, she was the f one of the first people I sent the script to. Uh, and then, you but know... the last person to be cast. It was the last person to be cast, it's a long story, you know, I guys don't want to know. Uh, but yeah, so happy that that happened. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Sanya and Sohail are both, uh, like, amazing veteran actors on TV, so, you know, they were an uh, easy choice for me. It was, you should ask them why they did it, because I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to answer that? Um, okay, so when I was told uh, that Sam wanted me to, actually Sam called me and said, I want you to play this character, and I was like, uh, you think I'll be able to do justice? Because uh, for various reasons, she's an old, first we were thinking of her as an older person, and then they changed the character a bit for my age. And uh, yeah, so I think I did it more because A, the story um, in its totality uh, spoke to me. Um, it was Simon's first feature film. I had to do it. <laughs> and also because I think being part of projects um, like these in Pakistan is not only about making films and acting. It is about, um, these are about, to me, it's, it's resistance. It's protest. It's rebellion. <laughs> So, so all these people here, they're not just really actors. Alina here is not just an actor. Um, we don't even know what the response back home would be to a film like this or a story like this, but we would still make it if we have to make it all over again. Um, Alina, you, in the short, now the feature, and I'm wondering if you can talk about... I mean, the reception here when it first premiered, just wondering if we can hear from you about what this means to you and you know, the progress of, from the beginning and now to this you know, penultimate moment here as well. जी मैं बहुत ज़्यादा खुश हूँ पहले तो मैं शुक्रिया दा करती हूँ टिफ़ का और जजिस का जोरी का आप सभी का जो आप आए हैं इतनी इज्जत दी मैं दिल से आप सबका शुक्रिया दा करती हूँ मैं बहुत ज़्यादा खुश हूँ कि हमारी फिल्म्स को इतने बड़े टिफ फिल्म फेस्टिवल पे चलाया जा रहा है हमारी ट्रांस कम्युनिटी को हमारी ट्रांस कम्युनिटी की स्टोरीज को इस तरह से हाईलाइट किया जा रहा है तो मुझे उम्मीद है कि आने वाले वक्त में हमारे ट्रांस कम्युनिटी के लिए बेहतर होगा सो थैंक यू सो मच स्टीफ एंड आर पर्सन जी सेइंग दैट शी इज वेरी थैंकफुल दैट अ फिल्म लाइक दिस वाज गिवन अ प्लेटफॉर्म एट टेफ दैट इट्स अ फिल्म दैट आल्सो टॉक्स अबाउट हाइलाइट्स ट्रांस folk from Pakistan and it's a story that has reached out in a way uh, that hopefully will have a positive impact on, on, on their lives back home and everywhere.
Okay, let's uh, open it up for some questions. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, first of all, can you talk about the the title? And if you feel like it, you can comment on the ending. I do. Um, I, I think no. Uh, I don't think he's, it takes. I, it's a, I don't know if it's the right thing to say. It takes a certain amount of courage to do that. I don't think he <laughs> has that at that point in time, in in the context of the film, at least. Um, and no. Um, I usually don't mind if people interpret things in their own way. I think it's great. But this one, I'm like, no, I think it, it's more interesting to interpret the film as a coming of a story of a man, but that came a little bit at the cost of a couple of women, which is how it happens, unfortunately. <laughs> um, because that's what was something that we were very particular about while making the film. Um, the second question was about the title. Um, the title, I would let you interpret it, <laughs> I think, because the title can be many things. Uh, it can be uh, something that they're searching for, it can be something that they have or they want, you know, it, it, it can be in many things. Uh, then there is a real amusement park in Lahore called Joyland. Uh, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Um, is this working? Yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, just the film. Like, <laughs> I mean, because I received the whole thing just like the first edit. And at that point, I had read a script and I didn't really have a sense entirely of what the tonality of it was going to be. But just your, like, I mean, because Saim is a genius. I feel like <laughs> just in all, in all, in every sense of the word. Um, and I feel like the way that the film was just the, the directorial eye, the dialogue, it was all so like, densely layered uh, with meaning. And that was a bit of a challenge because usually when you're scoring something, you just have to highlight the subtext. But this film kind of exists in the subtext. And so it was kind of a tricky thing to do, which is why we ended up kind of using uh, the music pretty sparingly. I feel like it's not a very music-heavy film, and I think that's just because there's so much richness in the silence. Um, but where there was music, I wanted it to be as abstract as possible, so that you know every kind of you, th there's so many you know cogs to the to the way that the story is functioning, to the uh, the layers of the story. So I wanted all of that to kind of be able to exist in the sound and not uh, restrict it in any way. You know, that's why it just all kind of sounds very weird. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, okay, the person who said question. question was, what would you call your, the most heroic moment in the entire film? Uh, well, good question. Um, I'm not sure really. I think uh, there's a lot of, I think he finds some strength before he um, uh, comes out and gets the audience to get seated before they dance um, the big the big song. I think that's one place where he found some semblance of courage. Um, but it also seems like that was borrowed, so I'm not like I'm not sure. Um, I think I think that comes the closest really to something that felt like that. And maybe maybe actually I'd say perhaps the end as well feels feels um, like something particularly um, let's say, brave in a, in, a, in a sense. To me, at least. That was the most heroic moment? It certainly felt like it at the time. I, uh, let me tell you. Um, before we go, I'm just going to say this first. Get on your phones or your computers. Vote for this film 
for the People's Choice Award. Syme. Thank you so much, guys. Everybody, please, the team of Joyland. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.